Our next lecture is on calculating turnaround times for time management and estimation purposes. Our objectives for this lecture are to identify and break down a sequence of events necessary to complete a task, assign time values for each one of those tasks, compile a, a list of all the times necessary to estimate turnaround time, and to organize and effectively communicate your estimated turnaround time by setting a start date and an end date. So before we start with the math part of the lecture, let's talk about what is turnaround time. A turnaround time is the time necessary to complete all tasks in a given operation. Everything you have to do in life can be broken down into segments that need to be completed in order to finish an overall task. For example, in order to get to work today, I had to do a number of things. I had to wake up, get a shower, get dressed, pack my lunch, feed my cat, warm up my car, drive to work, park, enter the building, and so on and so forth. And each one of those steps takes a certain amount of time. If I can identify all the steps in a task, assign timed values to them, I can figure out that I had to get up at 6 o'clock this morning in order to get to work by 7.15. Once you have a list of all the things that you'll have to complete, you can create a timeline. And the very first thing you should do when you create a timeline is to say, when do I want or need to be done this project by? Working backwards from a deadline allows you to know the very last day that you can start a project. Um, if you're doing a project that's done all in one day, let's say that you're going to change the oil in your car, you can say, okay, well, I want to be done by 2 o'clock, so I have to start by 12.15, or however long it takes you to do all the steps in that given task. Once you have a deadline, you can make a chronological list of all the steps necessary to complete your job. So let's walk through this together. Uh, I do want to point out that your quiz this week is to basically do the same exact thing we're about to do, but choose something in your everyday life. So let's try this together. Uh, we're going to print and deliver 1 million postcards by July 16, 2012. So we must identify, one, what the deadline is. And if I go back one slide, the deadline is July 16th. I put it on my timeline here and I must deliver 1 million postcards to Des Moines, Iowa. Then we need to identify all the steps that are necessary to complete that task. And since it's printing postcards, we can make a list. I've made a very bare bones list. There's actually a lot more steps involved. Um, but I made a list of all the things that are necessary. So we must design postcards, get cost estimate, estimates to print the postcards. That might take two or three days, depending on where I send the quotes to. I have to have someone approve the cost estimates, return a purchase order to the printer. Once everything's finalized with the printer, I'll have to send files to the printer so they can prep them. If nothing is wrong with them, they'll prep the files and prepress. If I don't, if I didn't do something right, uh, I didn't set up my file, I didn't package my InDesign project, they might send them back. That would create um, more time that's lost in this process. They will make and deliver proofs. I will have to sign off on the proofs and return them. They will go into scheduling so that they can choose a time for us to print. They'll make printing plates. They'll set up the press. They will finally print our postcards. Then they'll trim our postcards. They'll put them in boxes and then shipping. Once I have a list of all the things necessary, we can start visualizing that on a timeline. 